out. Hello, it is 12 noon in Tripoli. It's 11 a.m. in Aberdeen in Scotland. I'm Monita Rajpal. And I'm Zane Verger. You're watching CNN, the world's news leader, and this is World One, live from London. The British phone hacking scandal is coming back to haunt Rupert Murdoch, one of the world's most powerful men. Newly released documents suggest phone hacking was widely discussed in the newsroom of his paper, The News of the World, and that senior editors and executives knew about it. The allegations come in a letter written four years ago by Clive Goodman. He's a News of the World journalist who was jailed for phone hacking in 2007. That surrounds the phone hacking scandal stretches far and wide. Journalists and politicians aren't the only ones caught up in it. There are also the people whose phone messages were intercepted. Mark Lewis is a lawyer who represents some of the victims. He joins us now here in the studio. Mr. Lewis, thank you very much for being with us. You represent the family of Millie Dowler. That's the British teenager who went missing and was subsequently found dead. Um, it was her phone that was, uh, it was later revealed that her phone was hacked into. And of course, that caused, that, that spurred this uproar uh, throughout the country here. Uh, what did the victims want? They already got an apology from Rupert Murdoch. Well, well I think it's um, too soon to say there's been an apology. Look, victims are looking for different things. There are different people. People are looking for financial compensation. Let's see what but actually happens as a result of all of this. Uh, Mr. Lewis, we thank you very much for joining us here today. Newspapers in Britain are all over this story. Let's get a taste of today's coverage. The Daily Telegraph's headline is this. President Barack Obama is on a three-day tour through the Midwestern United States. He has been tackling jobs and the financial crisis with rural voters. He also gave CNN's Wolf Blitzer a wide-ranging one-on-one interview. Mr. Obama began by outlining his plans for the economy. I'm going to be accountable. I think people understand that a lot of these problems were decades in the making. People well, the president also spoke about his views on international terrorism. The biggest concern we have right now uh, is not the launching of a major terrorist operation, although that risk is always there. Uh, the, the risk that we're especially concerned of right now is uh, the lone wolf terrorist, uh, somebody with a single weapon uh, being able to carry out uh, wide-scale massacres of the sort that we saw uh, in Norway Shell recently. workers are trying to contain an oil spill in the North Sea a week after it started. The spill is the worst of its kind in UK waters in the last decade. Let's come under criticism from environmental groups for not being open enough about the spill. For more on this, Vicki Wyatt is with me here in the studio. She's a senior climate campaigner for Greenpeace in the UK. How bad is this oil spill when you put it in perspective? Well, the UK government has said that this is a significant spill and it's the worst spill in the North Sea for over a decade. Right, Ms. Wyatt, thank you very much. We appreciate you uh, being here with us. Uh, thank you. Vicky Wyatt there from Greenpeace. Well, the Scottish government says it will make its own environmental assessment of the spill. Joining us now on the phone from Aberdeen is the Environment Secretary, Richard Lockhead. Uh, sir, thank you very much for being with us. What is your uh, assessment so far of what the, uh, the spill and kind of damage it's done so far? Regulation of the North Sea and the oil and gas industry, of course, is split between the Scottish government and the UK government in London. And our interest, of course, as you see, is to make sure that there's not... Watching World One, we want to talk about some of the stories that we're talking about here on W1. Take away his moustache and give him breasts. Yeah, that was the upshot of a bizarre British plot against Adolf Hitler. The idea was to lace the Nazi leader's food with female sex hormones to try to make him less aggressive. Scientist and author Brian Ford came across the plan in a batch of declassified documents. He says spy masters also considered dropping glue on Nazi troops to make them, Zane, you like that, stick to the ground. Now, for all those uh, wine lovers out there looking for a blend with a bit of attitude, here's something to make you a little thunderstruck. Aussie rockers ACDC have teamed up uh, with Warburton State back home to produce their own range of wine. Now, you can drink your way through a catalog of their albums, including Highway to Hell, Cab Sov, and You Shook Me All Night Long, Moscato. The new range hits the shelves in Australia on <laughs> Thursday. And normally, the only steam you'd see rising inside an airliner comes from the coffee. But if you fly Qantas, the in-flight entertainment can get you a bit steamy too. Passengers on some flights can watch a movie that claims to unravel the mysteries of, get this, the female orgasm. 
the 15-minute French film comes from a warning that it's for adult audiences only. Quanta says it uh, chooses its programs according to quality of content and customer demographic. I'm wondering who's flying on their planes, Amy. <laughs> Monita, thank you very much. You're watching World One live from London. More than 2,500 people have been killed in Syria since the uprising against the government began five months ago. The majority of them civilians. Many of those gunned down were innocent bystanders simply trying to escape the violence. But now a horrific incident in Latakia has highlighted the brutality of the conflict. CNN isn't allowed inside Syria, but Ara Damon is following events closely from neighboring Lebanon. She joins us now from Beirut with more on that. Arwa. Hi, Monita. And oftentimes the death toll really is just a statistic, but in this from case... From the streets of India's cities to the chambers of parliament, anger is raging over the arrest of an anti-corruption crusader. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh lashed out at activist Anna Hazara today. So but why does Hazara strike a chord with so many people across India? Well, CNN's Aisha Sasse takes a look. Anna Hazari waved as he arrived at the jail in New Delhi Tuesday with a... Welcome back. We're taking a look at sport now and qualifying for the Champions League has reached its final phase. And here in London, Arsenal got a win Tuesday night. Pedro Pinto is here with more and that. Hello. Good to see both of you. Yeah, you don't want to be our friend, but that's okay. I want to be your friend. <laughs> very, very gladly your friend. <laughs> let, let me get down to business. No Cesc, no problem. Arsenal won their first match since the departure of former captain Cesc Fabregas. The gun is where all three of us used to live at one point, right? Sure, we did. <laughs> yeah. We did indeed. Okay. Thank you very much for that, Pedro. Appreciate it. You're watching World One live from London. Coming Let's up, get a look first... now at the global weather picture. Meteorologist Jennifer Delgado is at the World Weather Center with the latest on that. Jen, hello. Hi, Manita. Uh, yeah, we are going to start off right now through parts of Asia. Uh, temperatures have been very hot across parts of China. And in. Oh. New York. <laughs> did you did you see how big that Dane was? I guess they don't call it a they call it a Great Dane for a reason. <laughs> Awesome. You're watching World One live from London. I'm Zane Virgin. I'm Monita Rajpal. Thank you for watching CNN.